right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Moment of Clarity. Uh, as you know, everybody's talking about the murder of George Floyd in Minnesota and the response by the people there. And, you know, the, 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 the debate that's being had on your mainstream media is not the real debate we should be having. It's, it's, it's the surface-level debate of whether this officer or that officer or a few bad apples or, you know, should be prosecuted, whether that guy is going to see justice for the murder of yet another unarmed black man or black person. This is a... a fucking horror show in our country and it goes on again and again and again and, he, and black or white. Yes, there's a, a major racial component, but it also has to do with just endless murder by police. We are not actually having the real discussion about why our police are all over the place like an infestation and armed to the teeth and ready to kill. That is not normal. That's not how most countries do it. The, the, the number of murders in America is insane. Here's some numbers and some facts that I think should be the actual conversation when we're talking about police killings, the, the murders by police, perpetrated by police. First of all, we have on average between 900 and 1,000 police killings per year. Now, I think that's actually a low estimate because I recall one of the recent years we had 1,200, I believe, uh, killings by police across America. But let, let's use the lower estimates so that we're not exaggerating. Let's give the lower estimates. 900 to 1,000 murders by police across America every year. That compares to like three in Germany and like seven a year in Britain or something. And we normally, our police normally kill more people in the first couple months of a year than the British police killed in the entire 1900s. I'm not kidding. Those are accurate numbers. Okay, so this report I just read had the number of deaths between 2005 and 2019. So we'll use that, that time period, 2005 to 2019. Let's say that there were, using those numbers, 900 to 1,000 deaths a year, there were 12,600 murders by police over that amount of time. That's an estimate. It's probably a low estimate. Of those murders, 12,600 people killed by police, three police officers were actually convicted of murder during that time frame. Many were convicted of lesser crimes, but of actually being convicted of murder, three police officers. So that means of those 12,600 murders, again, low estimate, police were convicted of murder 0.02% of the time. In the case of fatal killings by police, they aren't even charged except for 1% of the time. 99% of the time that a police officer kills someone, they're not even charged with anything. To rephrase that in a way that maybe your mainstream media could start to understand, police get away with murder 99% of the time without even being charged. They get away with murder without being convicted of murder 99 point whatever, 98% of the time. But here's another point you won't hear on your mainstream media that they won't dare make, is that our police shouldn't be all over the streets. This hasn't always been like this. This isn't like this in certain other countries. And our police should not be called for nothing crimes. They shouldn't, in the case of George Floyd, what was it, he had a, a fraudulent dollar bill or he was, had written a, a fraudulent check, supposedly. Let's assume that's true. And let's further assume that if it was a dollar bill that, it, that he knew it was a fake and he was trying to pay with a fake $20 bill. And he was like, ha, 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 I'm gonna get away with buying some food with a fake $20 bill. Still. Even if you accept all of that, which I don't know that any of that's true, even if you accept all of that, still, guys with guns ready to kill should not be called over a fake $20 bill. Guys with guns that, that, that are amped up on steroids most of the time, apparently 25% of cops in urban areas use steroids that are, that are, that are you know, pumped up and ready to abuse people, to brutalize people. That is not who you should call for anything that's not an incredibly violent, awful crime. Yes, fine. If a guy is running down your street with multiple guns, just fucking killing people and dogs and birds, then yeah, 
fucking, all right, call the guys with guns to combat that guy with the gun. But that is incredibly rare. Instead, what most people call police for are like, is like nothing. You know, the music's too loud next door. There's a guy pissing in our fountain out front. But that guy is parked in the wrong spot. I had someone tell me that, because that, uh, sometimes I'll play tennis on these public tennis courts. And uh, I was out there, and the, the, the idea, the common courtesy is, it's kind of like a public basketball court. A tennis court, if you play for an hour, you give it up to the next person in line. I had someone tell me that the, the other day he saw the cops were called because someone had played tennis over an hour and didn't get off the public court. And it was someone else's turn. You don't call guys with guns to clear the tennis court. Here's a rule that you can use for dealing with the police. If you're thinking of calling the police, ask yourself, will I be okay with it? Will I be totally fine with it? Will I be almost damn near excited if someone gets murdered at the end of this? Because when you call the police, you're inviting the possibility of someone getting murdered into the situation, okay? That's what it is. That's what it is. You've invited guys with guns who uh, can kill with impunity. I mean, they're almost never charged with murder. They're almost never convicted of murder. They can kill with impunity and they got a gun on their belt, you've invited them into the situation. So anytime you think, you know, this guy, he's parked with a wheel on my lawn or something, and I yelled at him to move his car, and he didn't move it, I'm calling the cops. Probably because he's black. Or let's say I go running out there and I say, thank goodness you arrived, police officers, and they shoot and kill me. Either way, I gotta be okay with the idea that either I or someone else is about to get murdered and they might not get murdered. Maybe the cops come and they deal with it all great. They're the most wonderful people in the world. But someone might get murdered. It's not less likely that someone's going to get murdered if you call the cops. Unless, again, you're dealing with the crazy axe murderer killing everyone situation, which almost never happens. Let's use that as a basis. Next time you're thinking of calling the cops, think, am I okay with possibly someone getting murdered? The, 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 my, the person, the next door neighbor, their music's very loud, and I don't like it. I'm going to call the cops. Oh, am I okay with them getting murdered and it being on my conscience? Okay, sure. I'm okay with them getting murdered, and I'm okay with myself getting murdered because more than once, and there was a famous, uh, you know, well-known story recently, what was it, a year or two ago, where the woman came running out to the police to say, thank goodness you, uh, you came to help, cops, and they shot her. So... You could be the one, if you call the cops, you could be the one that gets killed. Anyway, the overall point here is that we have to reanalyze, reassess what police are in our society. They are, most of the time, the fist of the fascist state, all right? They are the corporate fascist state when it needs to protect itself, when it needs to hold people down and make sure they do what works for the corporate state. That's what mostly cops do. Occasionally they do something positive, but that's the exception that proves the rule. We need to reassess the entire role of police officers in our society. Your average police officer, it, it, it gets less than one felony arrest a year. They average around one. And a felony is, you know, a higher degree, a higher crime, a, a, a bigger level of robbery or something, bank robbery. So if they get one felony arrest a year, what does that mean they're doing? the other 99% of the year. Just harassing people, creating crimes where there aren't any, arresting black people for an open alcoholic beverage, where apparently white people almost never get arrested for open alcoholic beverages, even though we're all drinking at the same rate. Apparently in New York, 4% of open alcoholic beverage arrests are of white people. Even though white people are, of course, drinking the same amount of alcohol. So most of the job of your average police officer is to stand around inserting themselves into people's lives and, and causing a very difficult time. And occasionally they stop a crime, but it's pretty rare. So I will repeat, it is time to reassess the role of police in our society. That's been your moment of clarity. Uh, please share it if you think it's important. Uh, we're, we're being incredibly uh, suppressed and censored here on YouTube. Uh, so I have created a secondary YouTube channel. It's called Moment of Clarity. If you're watching this on the Redacted Tonight channel, please go subscribe to the Moment of Clarity channel. That'll help a lot. 
Also check out my podcast called Common Censored. If you subscribe to that and uh, you know get it on your, your news feeds, then we'll be far less depressed there. All right, hope you check out those things. Keep fighting.